This is a, a clip for Michael Beamish, I believe was his name, um, regarding a question earlier um, about the ST1901 movement. This applies to any chronograph movement with eccentric adjusters, and it's in relation to adjusting the eccentrics for the meshing of wheels for the chronograph operation, and the, um, the effect of a stuttering sweep seconds hand. In a badly meshed chronograph, uh, you can get a stuttering effect on the sweep seconds hand. The longer the seconds hand, the more noticeable it is, the more exaggerated it is. And the shorter the seconds hand, the smoother it will be. So there's always a disparity there because you have a small seconds. So you've got a, a tiny little hand that's sweeping around and a small or rather a short seconds hand sweeping around at 21,600 VPH is going to look about as smooth as a large seconds hand sweeping at 28,800. So when you start the large center seconds hand, the sweep seconds hand, it will look a little bit more stuttery generally than the small sweep seconds anyway. So do bear that in mind. Um, however, it shouldn't have an obvious stutter. And the usual cause of that is bad meshing between either, between the, um, the, ex the fourth wheel driving wheel on the extended pivot and the meshing clutch wheel here, or the meshing clutch wheel and the chronograph runner here. And the chronograph runner you'll see has very small fine teeth, whereas the rest of them have quite coarse teeth in comparison. That's to ensure a smooth, even meshing of the wheels when you engage the chronograph, when you press the start stop button, to make sure that there's not an enormous jump and you, uh, you lose a, a second or two with uh, engagement of the chronograph function, which can happen on badly adjusted systems, incidentally. Um, so what you want to do when you're adjusting these, first of all, is to check for play in all of your wheels, first and foremost, because if you've got play or you've got bent pivots or anything like that, that will affect how this performs. Um, always watch a full rotation of your fourth wheel pivot here to make sure that this wheel is flat and smooth and rotates evenly. If for any reason this pivot is bent, and that can easily happen, because when pressing this on, you can bend the pivot incredibly easily. I always use a staking set or dueling set for pressing this on to make sure it's flat and even and true. And I use typically use a stake with a hole that's large enough to go around this and bear on this flat portion here. That ensures that it gets pressed on nice and flat while it's in the movement holder. Uh, you can do it very carefully with a pair of brass tweezers or similar, but you do have to be very careful. It's easy to slip and bend this wheel and also bend the pivot. If you bend the pivot, you will see a rocking motion like this as it rotates. This is would be a side view. And if that happens, what's happening as well as it pivoting up and down is the meshing will change inwardly and outwardly so that it will alternate between not meshing correctly and meshing too tightly. So you need to check for that first. You need to check for play in the pivots of these wheels and make sure that these uh, have um, little to no play, side play that is. And, um, and then when adjusting, you need to work your way through from the coupling mechanism right the way around. And rather than just look at something over here and say, that's not meshing, I'll adjust this over here. You need to make sure that everything is meshing as it should. So you start at this side, you'll need strong magnification, a strong loop or a microscope. Um, the microscope I've found since I've had one, and it's only a little cheap thing that I picked up off eBay, but since I've had it, it's been really, really useful for this kind of adjustment and for hairspring work and the like. But obviously the fact that I'm getting a bit older and my eyes are not improving with age. Uh, has something to do with that as well, but there you go. So the meshing between the wheels needs to be such that it's of adequate depth that it engages and it drives the coupling wheel smoothly without stuttering stop-start kind of movements. Uh, if the depth is inadequate, what you will get is a, is a sort of stuttering and a stop-start effect of this wheel, of your, your clutch driving wheel. If the depth is too great, it will cause binding and it will kill the amplitude. 
and that's not good either. Essentially the teeth of the wheels when you view them through magnification need to be such that they're not bottoming out um, against each other because that's way way too tight there should be a small amount of gap and this needs to be the same all the way around so ideally you need to look through your magnification and watch this for a full rotation and when you make adjustments to the eccentric this here is a, a screw head with a, an, a, an offset pin to one side and it's seated in the plate it's not actually a screw it's uh, this has a pin offset so that as you rotate this head the pin stays in place but the the position of the head moves around that pin in orbit as it were so if you turned this screw here 360 degrees exactly that would put this back to exactly where it was if you turned it 180 degrees then that would put this watch head 180 degrees out to the opposite direction from wherever that pin is so if for example the pin is on this side of the screw head and you turned it 180 degrees you would have more of the screw head on this side and less of it on this side. To that end only very very tiny adjustments need to be made to these and depending on which way it's been adjusted can also that can also make a difference and have a bearing on the contact faces of the teeth. What you need to do is dress a screwdriver and you need a very well fitting screwdriver and it has to be because these can be tight and they have to be tight to remain in place because friction retains them wherever they are. So make sure you dress a screwdriver so that when fitted it fits the slot fully and securely. And when adjusting you need to be looking at the meshing as you turn the adjustment and see what happens, see as you turn it left and right, see one will make the wheels move away from each other, one will bring them closer together to each other. You're looking to tune that adjustment, you need to tune it while it's running, ideally, and again you have to be careful because you don't want to slip off your screwdriver and hit the balance wheel or something similar. So with this held very, very securely in a case vise or in a movement holder, if it's the movement out of the watch, you need a good firm base. Don't do this on something flexible like this, this desk pad that I have here now. And with the screwdriver in there watching this, you need to turn this and you adjust the meshing until you get a good consistent meshing that drives this smoothly all the way around without any stop start action and without it bottoming out and without it adversely affecting the amplitude. You'll see when it's too tight, you'll see that amplitude start to drag and, you, and it will be noticeable. Once that one's adjusted, you need to move to the meshing of this and the centre chronograph runner. And it's exactly the same story with this one. Much, much harder to see because the teeth on the runner are much finer, but the same story. So you need to put it in the run position and then you need to adjust this screw right down here because this is the one that actually stops this spring pushes this coupling mechanism up this little bit here is where it acts against the pillar wheel and it drops into that slot to make contact but this screw is the screw that stops it when it contacts the chronograph runner so you need that screw to be stopping it at a suitable distance and again you need to adjust it adjust it sorry in the same manner so that the meshing is adequate enough that it provides a good contact surface and drive without killing the amplitude and that there's no stutter at all. Um, you can then go on to check the remainder. Uh, in this case, as I say, these two adjustments alone should be adequate to stop that stuttering, but you can go ahead and check the remainder of, the, um, of these wheels. So you've got this one here, which adjusts the intermediate wheel. And that's the one that the finger, which is in this little hole, as that rotates around, that turns this intermediate wheel, which in turn turns the minute recording wheel. So you can adjust that one if necessary to make sure that that makes adequate contact. It needs to, uh, the finger on this needs to engage that wheel again securely enough that it, it catches it and drives it over, but not so far that it sort of drives it too far. You'll see what I mean when you adjust that because it's, that's just one finger rather than a whole toothed wheel. Um, but you'll see if you adjust it too far, it will actually drive that too far over and it will turn your minute recorder wheel 
over to such a point where it will actually start to turn over to the second minute and your uh, jumper spring will likely land on one of to, on top of one of the teeth and essentially that's the same principle with any swiss type chronograph where you make the adjustments from right from the driving section to make sure that everything's fine there because if you adjust something over here and something's not right there then you will not fix the problem and again importantly check all of the side play of all of the wheels and make sure make sure that there's nothing untoward there before you start making adjustments if you've got a bent pivot and this is out of uh, out of alignment no amount of adjustment on these screws is going to fix it it will it will work fine in uh, at some parts of the rotation but not at others um, hopefully that's been useful i'm not going to be adjusting anything on this because obviously this is this is not my watch this belongs to somebody and it's currently working fine i'm not going to be adjusting anything to um to to make a point and then having to readjust it all later uh, if wished at some point i will go through um try and film a video of the relevant adjustments required for a chronograph mechanism for the coupling functions i don't know if i will be able to film one that will actually show a good enough magnified view down here but i can try and film that on the scope uh, because i do have a, an attachment for my phone but hopefully that's been useful for you thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one